Good morning, my friends. Let us be joyful and cheerful as we face this day. We do not know what is lying ahead of us, but we are holding the hands of the one who knows. And let him be allowed to control our lives, lead us, guide us, and let, it, let us follow him. And nothing can go amiss when you faithfully follow him. He loves you. And today's meditation is taken from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 15, verse 16, where Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you may go forth and bring forth fruit, fruit that will last. And uh, then you may ask anything to God the Father, he will give you, and you ask in my name. Believers are chosen and appointed for some specific purposes. And I would like to mention at least five of these purposes for which Jesus has chosen you and appointed you. Do you know that he not only chose you, but he also has given you an appointment. And you need to therefore know the purpose for which you are chosen and appointed. This is something that many believers do not realize. It is because they do not study the word of God. When you study the word of God, then you know what you are capable of and what is expected of you. The number one thing is, he has appointed you to be ambassador for Christ. Proclaim the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, God's salvation, reaching out to man through his son Jesus. Believers are not called to be an exclusive club of retirees. They are ambassadors of Christ and of his kingdom. Understand that and accept this position humbly because to be an ambassador is not an easy task and also it is not a cheap thing. It is the most important job God has placed on you. Once you have been saved, your sole reason for being in the world is to deliver the message of your king. And who is your king? The Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And then again, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 20 says, I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in Christ. And I am an ambassador in chains for his sake, that I may declare it fearlessly. And that is the purpose. You have a message to pass on to the people of this world because you are representing kingdom and who is an ambassador? An ambassador is someone who is sent from my country to another country to represent the country and its government. He is not to declare there his own ideas and his own plans, but he has to declare to the other countries, authorities, what the government of India has planning, is, is planning. In the same way, we as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, we are not to declare our own ideas, our own philosophies and our own opinions. No, we are to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ that he has handed over to us, that we may represent him and his kingdom. His kingdom means the kingdom of God. It's righteousness. 
and his kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness and justice and and uh, and holiness and love and that is the message we have to convey to the world as ambassadors and let us not forget it are you fulfilling this appointment your responsibility on the basis of the scripture verses that i have read to you this is what paul is conveying to you and to me it is our calling it is our responsibility and the message we need to carry the gospel of jesus christ and secondly the purpose of our calling and appointment is to bear fruit the gospel according to st john chapter 15 verses 1 to 8 it talk about fruit bearing as followers of jesus christ there are three levels of a fruit bearing number one is a fruit that is 30 percent number two level is more fruit that is 60 percent and number three is much more fruit that is 100 percent fruitfulness the purpose of a branch is to bring forth fruit and god's purpose and plan and his desire is not for us to bear 30 percent or 60 percent and be satisfied with it his desire is for you and me to bring forth 100 percent fruit much more fruit that is what this this passage that i mentioned uh, uh, make clear and i want you to read the gospel according to saint john chapter 15 verses 1 to 8 and uh, it is interesting to note uh, that fruitless branches also are somehow attached to the vine and uh, what does that mean but uh, but, uh, the, but they are fruitless and uh, why they are there they are there because they listen to the gospel and they opened their eyes and they made a profession and they were baptized and seemed capable of bringing forth fruit appeared to be fruitful branches and that's why they are in the vine but they are fruitless branches because they are not related to Christ enough What does the Bible say? You abide in Christ. And that abiding Christ means not an one day affair a week on a Sunday. No. A branch has to be kept alive in order to bring forth fruit. So that branch cannot be separated from the vine even for one second. You cut the branch immediately you try to fix it up that branch is dead you cannot bring forth any fruit and there are many christians living like that they are known as sunday christians or easter christians or christmas christians once in a while and that's why they are fruitless that's why they are not able to glorify god in their lives than through their lives and uh, so when you are not properly connected and joined to Jesus Christ and abiding him constantly yes what do you have they are not genuine enough to bear fruit they are not connected enough or joined enough and neither are they genuine enough to bear fruit more profession that than possession and uh, more uh, uh, pretending than being more deception than the truth and more counterfeit than real but you are chosen and appointed and anointed for bearing fruit not to pretend and not appear to be fruit bearing capacity tree but you got to be genuine you got to be um, possessing 
the very life of Jesus Christ because remember the branch always receive the life of Christ a branch of a uh, life of wine and that's how the branch brings forth the fruit and when you abide constantly in Jesus the very life of Jesus continue to flow in you and you become a very fruitful and useful a branch in which God is well pleased he is looking for much more fruit 100% fruit in you and one uh, the more fruit you bear the more humble you become and then God will make you more fruitful and then the other thing to to receiving the things of God receive through prayer and that is necessary that is the third lesson you can learn how do you receive the things of God through prayer there are two clear promises given to those who believe number one those who believe in Jesus shall do uh, great works that Jesus Christ has been doing and then he says you shall do greater things than I have done and how is it going to be possible you know that's what Jesus said in John's gospel chapter 14 verse 12 because that is God's purpose for choosing you and appointing you in his kingdom to do greater works there is a works that you must do as believers we need to be engaged in evangelism we need to be uh, available for the mission of the church we need to spend and be spend and we must be always ready to go anywhere God wants us to go or to meet anyone God will lead you to meet and never be ashamed and afraid do that that is God's plan for you my brother and uh, that is how all our prayers will be answered as well John's gospel chapter 14 verses 13 and 14 you know we we just have a habit of uh, quoting half a verse and then claiming every blessing ask and you shall receive the Bible doesn't say that. What does the Bible say? If uh, you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you may ask anything in my name, it shall be given to you. Are you abiding in Christ? Is God's word is allowed to abide in you? And I pray therefore this this morning let this word that is coming to you abide in you very richly bringing forth the fruit for the glory of God and um, then you will have the power to do greater things and you will receive answers to prayer when you abide in Christ when you are fruitful remember these are the ways you can enjoy the riches of God and the fourth thing is why are you chosen and why are you appointed to be holy and blameless in him Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 our calling is to be holy and it is God's will for us to be holy and we need to be holy because God being our father he is holy and he wants all his children to be holy and always remember that and once you are saved, you are always saved. And it doesn't matter how you live. No, my brother, my friend, don't imagine that. Why are you called and why are you saved? You are saved to be holy. That is the appointment. So that when Jesus comes and you look at him, you shall be changed into his own likeness. When we see him, we shall be like him. That is, is, that is the fifth thing, to be like him. Romans chapter 8 verse 29, that he wants, and then you read 1 John, the whole epistle, it all, chapter 3, 
you know the whole in the chapter 3 says brethren we do not know what we we shall be but we know that we are children of God but what we shall be we do not know but we know one thing when we see him we shall be like him that is the ultimate purpose of God for our lives to be like him and therefore it has to start here it has to begin here in this life we keep on changing each day allowing the holy spirit to do his work in us of uh, transforming us to be like jesus don't wait until don't imagine that christ will come take me to heaven and in heaven he will do all this work in me no when you see jesus he wants you to be like him so we are changed from glory to glory and we go from victory to victory and that keeps on happening here on earth and this is the purpose of choosing you and appointing you he has chosen you you have not chosen me but i chose you that you may go forth and bring forth fruit and fruit that will last may the lord help us that we will be fruitful for his glory and that's the way we can attract people to jesus let him be glorified in your life father we need your grace forgive us oh lord that we have taken so many things for granted but we never realize there is a possibility of abiding in you and when we abide in you we know that we keep on receiving your life within us and your life is an overcoming life it is a victorious life it is a marvelous miraculous life and let each one of us enjoy that life today and in the days to come in jesus name amen my friends live by his word walk in the light of god's word and let the word of god abide in you richly this is a wonderful day enjoy this day and have a great day amen